Sean, I'm a good morning. Mike Pompeo continues to unload on U.S. foreign policy moves made since leaving the State Department in January. In a Q&A with the Center for Security Policy, led by its president, Newsmax contributor Fred Flights, Pompeo calls for a return to President Trump's approach in the Middle East. The Biden administration undid or attempted to undo nearly every one of those by sitting in Vienna, handing the Iranians billions of dollars as the lucre to convince them to come back into this failed nuclear deal that had no chance of permanently stopping Iran from getting a nuclear weapon or a nuclear weapons program. But his successor, Secretary of State Tony Blinken, says the U.S. will continue to negotiate with Iran. We're engaged in diplomacy to return to mutual compliance with the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Blinken signaling a return to the Obama approach. The Trump administration was the sixth consecutive to acknowledge Iran is run by a terrorist regime, but as Pompeo says, the first to exert a maximum pressure campaign, sending a clear message to the Middle East. They knew that the United States was going to work tirelessly to deny the Iranian regime the money and dollars it needed to fuel not only its nuclear program, but its terror campaign around the world. All of the elements of power were going to be denied to the Iranian regime until they conform to a series of conditions that we laid out for them. And part of that was walking away from the JCPOA, a, a nuclear deal that, that wasn't worth, frankly, the paper that it was written on. And Pompeo says under Trump, the world knew who America stood with. We made clear that Israel had the right to defend itself every day and always do whatever it took to get that right and that the United States would be its friend and ally. It was a clear demonstration of resolve between the United States and the lone democracy in the Middle East, Israel. But White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says this administration is changing course. Uh, I would say that we are not following the same tactics of the prior administration. Aside from putting forward a peace proposal that was dead on arrival, we don't think they did anything constructive, really, to bring an end to the long-standing conflict in the Middle East. And the former Secretary of State is firing back, saying the Abraham Accords are the model for the 21st century, normalizing relations between Israel and Arab nations for the first time in decades. We laid out a vision for peace in the Middle East, including a path forward for the Palestinians. It just says you can have a better life, but your corrupt regime intent on terror in Gaza and your corrupt regime that, that undermines Israeli sovereignty in the West Bank um, are going to have to change their ways. And we're not going to let that stand in the way of us building out a uh, peace relationship, a set of strategic understandings between Arab states and Israel. But Pompeo says this situation stems from the Biden administration isolating America's close friend in the months leading up to this current conflict. The absence of the clear commitment early on. Remember how long it took President Biden to just make the first phone call to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Those actions sent signals to the Middle East, to the Iranian terrorists, that are sponsored by the regime in Iran that said this is a green light and you, you see the results of this. And here on Capitol Hill, a group of 19 Republican senators led by Florida's Rick Scott are introducing a resolution calling on the U.S. to stand firm with its ally Israel while also protecting foreign nationals under rocket fire from Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And many of those foreign nationals are Americans. Back to you.